Boom. Hey, I'm Prince. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be reacting to the FBI's top 10 most wanted explain. You feel me? Mostly, I see a few people react to this and it looks funny. Ain't gonna lie. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tap into it. Roll to 3K, which I hit 3K before the end of the year. So, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You feel me? We're so close. We're like 100, 200 away. Um, If you leave a comment under this video, it's going to boost it to boost the video in the algorithm so go ahead just say something random and then go lie you feel me broski all right boom or you can wait until you see something interesting in the video and say something boom for almost 75 years the fbi's top 10 most wanted list has helped bring down some oh, nations. bro i'm already getting the icky vicky vibes bro i don't like scary stuff bro and there's like I, I don't know if it's gonna be like scary scary but like i'm getting the vibes it's gonna be a little a little spooky you know what i'm saying for october but still like ugh most dangerous criminals ready as for what makes the list special it only features criminals that the fbi deems to be especially serious threats to society Threats and to society, get on it they have to do something extremely so messed Thanos up level have a very lengthy record of major crimes the story behind the list goes that back in 1949 a reporter asked the fbi to list out the 10 toughest guys that they were trying to catch so they could ask the public for help After oh obtaining like these guys are free like these guys are like they want it. Oh lord! Like this some mon monkey D Luffy people. Oh no! Okay, 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 okay. I see, I see, I see. The reporter published the criminal. These are some one piece motherfuckers, bro. Washington Daily News, and the rest is history. Since then, the FBI has been able to catch almost 500 wanted fugitives thanks to public tips. These are the current criminals on the list: Badresh Kumar, Shetan Bai Patel. On it. Bad, she sounds like a villain, bro. <laughs> what? Yo, that is not, that has got to be like the most villainous name you could ever think of, Broski. What? Broski's name got the whole alphabet in it, bro. Like, bro, like Thanos, yeah, bro. But what What about Badness Connecticut Shimbino Kushina by You know what I'm saying? What about that guy? That's that's the real enemy here. On April 12th, 2015, a CCTV camera captured two Dunkin' Donuts employees, one male and one female, walking towards the shop's back room at around 9.30 p.m. before disappearing from view. A few seconds later, the man comes back into the camera's view, and it seems as if nothing out of the ordinary took place in the minute that went down between the two clips. A few minutes later, customers alerted the police when they didn't see any employees in the shop, and that's when the cops discovered something horrifying. Lying on the floor of the shop's back room was nah. an Indian woman named Palak, nah. who had been pummeled to death by the man in the footage. As it was later revealed, the man who took Palak's life was her husband, Vadrish Kumar. As the authorities later learned, the couple had been through a series of major arguments in the months leading up to that day. According to court documents, the two of their visas were about to expire. I was not expecting that. What the heck? Fire in a few weeks. Palak wanted to go back to India, but Badrish Kumar wanted to stay in the U.S., and it looks like he couldn't find a better way to communicate his frustration with the situation than to brutally take his wife's life. That is crazy! After the crime, Badrish Kumar was last seen taking a taxi from a hotel in New Jersey to a train station in Newark, but what he did after that is really anyone's guess. Yo, bro just caught a body and disappeared? Who might otherwise walk away scot-free, the FBI placed him on the most wanted list. As of today, there's a quarter million dollar reward to bring the suspect into custody, but almost ten years. Broke out a body and just disappeared. Like How soon. do you even do that? What the fuck? Alejandro Rosales Castillo. Man, these guys are the long ass names. Suspect on the most wanted list, 26 year old Alejandro Rosales Castillo has been on the FBI's radar for more than eight years. In 2016, he shot his female coworker. San Bro. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced the FBI is actually bad at jobs, bro. You know what I'm saying? First of all, they need the public's help. <laughs> they need my help <laughs> to find some some D1 level criminals. You know what I'm saying, bro? What the heck? Eight years? Bro, kind of body has been walking around for eight years? Bro, imagine you've seen this dude that like, you just don't know, bro. Yeah, bro, I, what's, bro, I was watching this TV show and like at the beginning, it's like you walk past like 30 serial killers in your lifetime and you never know. Bro, that's that Loki give me a heart attack. I was like, <gasps> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> like, that's gotta be jokes, right? What do you mean? You mean like, what do you? No, <laughs> that that can't be that. You can't be real, bro. That can't be real. Nah. Andy Lee in a wooded area what? in Cabarrus County, North Carolina. A few days what later, the, the female victim's car was located at a bus station in Phoenix, Arizona. As the authorities later found out, there were multiple people involved in the case, with the main ones being the victim, a woman named Amia Feaster, and Alejandro himself. No, that's crazy. Worked together at a restaurant in Charlotte. 
During the investigation, the cops learned that Sandy Lee and Alejandro had briefly dated, and after their breakup, Castillo started dating his other co-worker, Amia Feaster. Ty shit, According it's a lo to lover's quarrel. Sandy Lee had apparently lent some money to Alejandro, and on August 9th of that year, he texted her to meet up with him at a quick trip located on Eastway Drive in Charlotte, claiming that he was lover's going to pay her back. Disturbingly, that's when Castillo decided to rob her at gunpoint, take her life, and flee to Mexico. In an eerie clip of CCTV footage that was later released by the authorities, the suspect can be seen crossing the Mexican border through Nogales, Arizona, along with his girlfriend, Amia. A couple of months later that same year, Amia turned herself into the authorities in Mexico and was charged with accessory after the fact of felony murder and larceny of a motor vehicle. Based on her testimony, she and Alejandro had been staying with the killer's cousin. At some point, Castillo had once again disappeared with no explanation, and that's when she decided to turn herself in. As Bro. of 2024, the FBI has no further clues that could lead to Castillo's arrest. Bro, what the right heck? Now, These are some final boss level threats, bro. What the in Mexico. The last time he was seen, he wore his hair short and shaved on the side. Bro, that has killed a kind of body and fled the country. Like, yo. Bro, what? But that's pretty like much you only hear about this stuff in movies. I thought as of today, there should be happening in real life. Million dollar reward out for his arrest, but there have been no I know, further updates. On I know art case. imitates life, or life imitates art. But damn. Before we move on, I wanted to. No, I don't want to buy anything. I don't want to purchase anything. I don't want to. I want to see the most wanted thing on uh... Ruja Ignatova. In 2016, the Bulgarian entrepreneur Ruja Ignatova stepped on stage in a beautiful red dress at the Coin Rush Global event in Wembley, London, to talk about her vision for the future of her crypto company, OneCoin. Oh, she's scammed. She's During scammer. the presentation, she claimed that in two years, everyone would forget she's about Bitcoin and OneCoin would dominate the crypto world as the one true cryptocurrency. She got that bag of ran. It's hard to imagine that any of her excited, applauding investors knew that they were stepping into what was later described by the New York Times as one of the biggest scams in history. I knew it. <laughs> For several years, Ruja, or the crypto queen as she's known nowadays, promised her buyers a five-fold and even ten-fold return on their investment in one coin. Normally, these kinds of claims are an immediate red flag, but because the entire world was scrambling to get on the crypto action, a ton of investors jumped at the opportunity without thinking twice, resulting in a massive one coin buying frenzy. Between 2014 and 2016, OneCoin raked in more than $4 billion from unsuspecting oh investors, with more than $50 million coming from investors in the U.S. As Yo, the honestly, bro, like, props to her, bro. How do you convince that many people to, to just, like, throw their money away, bro? Learned when you know they what I'm saying? One coin. The company was pretty much a pyramid scheme in which they were rewarded for recruiting their friends to buy it as well. And for a while, the shady multi-level marketing model seemed to be working for Ruja. Like, However, how you do in that? 2016, a lot of our investors started complaining that they were really struggling to sell their one coins and that they didn't see how they'd ever recoup their investments. Word started to spread online that one coin was a scam, which drew the attention of the media as well as federal investigators. Unfortunately, it was a little too late by then. Less than a year and a half after her presentation in Wembley, Ruja got on a plane from Bulgaria to Greece and was never seen again. <laughs> Disturbingly, during the investigations, a bunch of really messed up emails written by Ruja were leaked by federal investigators in which the crypto queen made it more than clear that she knew she was scamming people out of their hard-earned money That's from the very crazy. start. In some of her emails, she admitted that the company wasn't actually mining any coins, that her coin was trash, and that her investors were idiots for trusting her. In one of her emails, she proposed an exit strategy to her partner, Carl Greenwood, which consisted of taking the money, running away, and blaming somebody else for the whole thing. Type shit. During the investigation, Carl ended up pleading guilty to wire fraud and conspiracy to launder money, for oh, which he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. As it was later revealed, the FBI had been on to Ruja long before she fled from Bulgaria, even recruiting her American boyfriend to look into her company's practices for them. After learning about her extremely sketchy business practices and her grand scheme to steal billions of dollars from investors all around the world, she was charged with wire fraud, money laundering, and securities fraud. Yo, she a, this she a mob. She found a boss. On the FBI's most wanted list, becoming only the 11th woman to earn that distinction. Looking into Yo, her past, balls, the hey, as to what could have influenced Ruja to do something so nefarious, federal investigators found some pretty interesting stuff. As it turns out, Ruja was fluent in four languages, was extremely intelligent, once had a job at a high-ranking consulting firm, and had been obsessed with fashion and maintaining her image from a very young age. 
It was only with the benefit of hindsight that prosecutors were able to clearly see how she used all these qualities to carry out her malicious plans. But she a manipulator, Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the FBI will find her anytime soon. It's been rumored that after fleeing the country, the Crypto Queen may have drastically altered her appearance with plastic. Okay, we could do out the eerie music, you know what I'm saying, bro? I'm thinking like something's just gonna pop out at me, bro, you know what I'm saying? Nothing's gonna pop out. I, I, chill, nothing's gonna pop out, you know what I'm saying? These are just real people that did really bad stuff that are free. Nothing's gonna pop out at you, you're good. <laughs> that didn't really help me, did it? <laughs> Big surgery. To travel with armed guards I'm at cooked. All times. Disturbingly, there have also been several allegations that she was murdered by an accomplice, but this hasn't been proven. If Yo, she is still see, alive, a... the FBI suspects Ruja is traveling on a German passport to the United Arab Emirates, Bulgaria, Germany, Russia, Greece, and multiple countries in Eastern Europe. Yo, she still got mad freedom. How in how she's been since her disappearance almost eight years ago. It's unlikely the FBI will ever find out what became of Ruja Ignatova after pulling off one of the largest financial. That is the largest history. heist in ever, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like some GT level heist, bro. Four billion. Yo. I don't even think Michael himself could have could have got away with this, bro. Arnaldo Jimenez. On May 12, 2012, Arnaldo Jimenez and his wife Estrella went out to celebrate their wedding in a black 2006 four-door Maserati. Ooh, Maserati. Less than 24 hours after the couple had said their vows, Arnaldo knifed his wife to death in the car, dragged her into the bathroom tub of her apartment in Burbank, Illinois, and disappeared without a trace. When Estrella didn't come back to pick up her kids at school the next day, her family called the cops, who ended up finding Estrella's remains still in her wedding dress in her bathtub. Immediately, a nationwide search for Arnaldo was launched, but by that time, the suspect was long gone. During the investigation, it was revealed but that Yemenis had to a friend before fleeing and told him, if anyone asks where I am, tell them I went to Mexico. Since then, the authorities have received multiple tips that Jimenez may have fled to Durango what? or Tamaulipas, Mexico, where he's believed to be hiding out with I got so many questions, bro. Initially, a $100,000 reward was issued for anyone with information that could lead to his arrest. But four oh, years after he was placed on the most wanted list, the FBI increased the reward to a quarter million dollars. Burbank police have stated that in the past 12 years, they've received hundreds of tips about Arnaldo's whereabouts, but none of them have led to anything significant. That's tough. After the crime, investigators what? traced his phone and determined that he had traveled from Chicago to Tennessee, then to Arkansas, and from there to Hidalgo, Texas. Bro, what's still in the U? Bro, what? What? Bro, what's still in the in America? Just oh, that's crazy. Very close to the Mexican border. They were unfortunately unable to determine where he went after that. Police have also revealed that the car in which Arnaldo carried out his heinous crime was never found. If the suspect is ever caught, he'll be spending the rest of his life in prison for first degree murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. But based on how things have played out since the last time he was seen, it's unlikely Arnaldo will ever pay for his atrocious crime. Bro, what? Vitello well, Minnison. As the leader of one of Haiti's largest and most violent criminal gangs, Craze Bari, Vitel Ohm Innocent, which do not let his name fool you, he is indeed not innocent, <laughs> has terrorized the region. <laughs> Bro, what? What an ironic name. For years, earning a spot on Look the FBI's chain, bro, the list book? for his role in a string of brutal kidnappings and murders. In October 2021, he collaborated with the notorious 400 Mawozo gang to carry out the high-profile kidnapping of 17 Christian missionaries in Haiti. Disturbingly, five of the kidnapping victims were children, one as young as eight months old. Held at gunpoint, the hostages were reportedly kept captive for two months while the gangs demanded a ransom of $1 million per hostage. Okay. It was only after an anonymous donor paid an undisclosed sum to Craze Bari and 400 Mawozo that the missionaries were finally released. Based on court documents, Innocent and his crew ended up spending the ransom money on weapons. That same year, the Haitian president was assassinated, which caused Innocent's influence to grow exponentially in the chaos that engulfed the country. In the aftermath of the assassination, Crazebury claimed new territories and expanded their ranks quicker than the cops could even keep track of. What the fuck? In 2023, Crazebury boasted an estimated yeah, 600 are... members, many of whom were young children who were involuntarily recruited to serve Innocent's criminal organization. Almost exactly one year after the kidnapping of the Christian missionaries, Crazebury kidnapped two U.S. citizens under Innocent's orders, Marie Odette Franklin and Jean Franklin. Unfortunately, one of the victims did not survive, while the other was held for a $300,000 ransom. 
somehow, Innocent still managed to walk away scot-free. In April 2024, CNN released an interview where Innocent brazenly showed off his luxury home, which sticks out like a sore thumb in the extreme poverty surrounding him. Surrounded by gold-rimmed couches and chairs, Innocent explained to the reporter how he came to power. In the interview, he shamelessly blamed Haiti's corruption on the country's politicians, refusing to take any responsibility for his own actions. Interestingly, he also alleged that before becoming the leader of Cranesbury, he had once owned multiple legitimate businesses, including a hotel and a rental car company, but said his companies were destroyed by the government. According to multiple crime analysts, Innocent was once a political activist before he turned to violent crime to maximize his influence. Mm, the Back classic the US, bad, good is guy into bad guy. For an insanely long list of crimes, including kidnapping for ransom, theft, murder, assault, vehicle theft, and destruction of property. There's a two. Bro, how do you just kidnap people? How did? Oh. Uh. Warrant for information leading to his arrest. How do you just... But with powerful connections and an armed gang, it'll be pretty tough to ever bring him to justice. How do you kidnap people and get away with it? I was, I was like, what? Omar Alexander Cardenas. In 2012, oh, okay, like released like two eerie before and after clips of a man walking into and then running away from a shopping mall area on August 15th, 2019. The man seen in the video is 29-year-old Omar Alexander Cardenas, and let's just say that he didn't exactly go shopping in the time that elapsed between those two clips. After disappearing from the camera's view, Omar walked up to a man standing outside the Hair Icon Barber Shop at an outdoor shopping center and fired several rounds from his semi-automatic handgun at his head, killing him instantly. Immediately after committing the crime, Omar fled the scene a little after 4 p.m., as you can be seen in the eerie FBI footage. A suspected member of the Pierce Street Gang in Los Angeles, and often going by the nickname Dollar, Omar is suspected to have fled to Mexico to seek refuge among his relatives. In September 2021, a federal arrest warrant was issued for the suspect after he was charged with murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution, thanks to which he was pinned on the most wanted billboard. Even though he committed a brutal crime pretty much in broad daylight and didn't exactly shy away from the cameras after Literally. he did, the cops seemed to know surprisingly little about Omar. The only things they really know about him are that he's around 300 pounds, wears thick prescription glasses. Okay. Like, I'm not crazy, bro. These guys are bad at their jobs. <laughs> These guys are bad at their jobs, bro. There's no way, bro. Dudes, there's, this guy sticks out. He's five foot seven, 240 to 300 pounds. Yeah, you know, hard to miss a dude. You know what I'm saying? Hard to miss a dude, bro. What the what the hell is we doing? Is, has at least one tattoo and is considered armed and dangerous. What are we Which doing? Which is hardly enough to track down a criminal who's crossed international borders to flee prosecution. With time, hopefully more information will surface leading to his potential extradition and arrest. But for now, it looks like Omar will remain a most wanted criminal. Yulan Adonai Archaga Karayas. Back in the 80s, a gang known as like the Mara Salvatrucha names, bro. was set up to protect Salvadorian immigrants from other gangs in the Los Angeles area. Fast forward a couple of decades, and the Mara, or the MS-13 for short, had become one of the oh, most heard about the MS -13. violent criminal organizations in the world. Nowadays, MS-13 has a strong presence in El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, the US, Canada, and even Spain. They engage in all kinds of criminal activity, from drug trafficking, human trafficking, extortion, countries. murder, and racketeering, often using extreme violence to maintain their influence and control. For many years, a man named Yulan Adonai Archaga Karayas operated as the head of MS-13's criminal activities in Honduras, providing support and resources to the gang in Central America and the U.S. with firearms, narcotics, and loads of cash. Often operating under his alias Porky, Yulan is wanted by the FBI Porky? for trafficking multiple You could choose any name through Honduras as a thug and you choose and Porky? Of several rival gang members. Among Porky's colorful criminal charges, you'll find everything from murder to racketeering conspiracy to drug importation. Okay, so he might actually be the final boss. I thought, I thought that. Even though he's only around 160 pounds, Yulan is considered one of the most powerful men in Honduras, as the MS-13 gang has had the country in a chokehold for years. Yo, what? The most shocking part of the story is that at one point, Porky had already been apprehended by the Honduras. Bro, you gotta stop calling him Porky, bro. <laughs> even taken to for a I can't take you serious, bro. Honduran prosecutors. He says Porky. But during 
during the hearing, 20 armed men dressed up in the same clothes as the anti-gang police units walked into the building escorting a veiled suspect no. and suddenly opened fire on the guards. In just a few seconds, the men subdued the guards and safely escorted Porky out of the courthouse, killing four police officers in the process. What? For obvious reasons, Porky is considered armed Yo, and extremely dangerous. Due to the sheer nature of his crimes, the FBI is offering $5 million to anyone who can provide information leading to his arrest. One of the what? things that makes it extremely difficult to track a suspect like Porky down is that he's taken every possible measure to fly under the radar. Although he's believed to still be in Honduras, he and his security team use untraceable numbers from Israel and Poland, and he goes to extreme lengths to keep his whereabouts a secret when he contacts his family. Although the hunt for Porky is far from over, he's likely to remain one of the most elusive and dangerous fugitives on the FBI's most wanted list for years to come. Yo, what the? These are real Pablo Escobar level tier. Alexis Flores. One seemingly peaceful afternoon in July 2000, five-year-old Ariana De Jesus was playing on the street in Philadelphia with her sister and friends nah, when her mom went out bro. for a quick trip to the store. When her mom nah. came back, she started living every parent's worst nightmare. Ariana had been taken by a suspicious man. Immediately, her mother reported her missing, triggering a citywide search for the five-year-old girl. In a desperate effort to bring more attention to the disappearance, Ariana's family and friends covered every neighborhood wall, light post, and stop sign with flyers and missing posters, but nobody had any clue what had happened to the little girl. Unfortunately, after a few weeks of searching, the cops found her unresponsive in the basement of an abandoned apartment building just a few blocks away from where she had been taken. Disturbingly, the authorities also found a t-shirt featuring a bold political logo at the crime scene, which they deduced belonged to the suspect. During the investigation, a man came forward stating that he was pretty certain the t-shirt had belonged to a guy he only knew as Carlos, a drifter he had once employed as a handyman. Unfortunately, despite the promising lead, the case went cold for several years, leaving Ariana's family devastated and confused. Whoa. It wasn't until 2007 that the authorities were able to analyze the shirt again thanks to recent advances in DNA technology, and what they found changed the course of the investigation forever. The DNA in the shirt was a perfect match with that of a man named Alexis Flores, who had been arrested in Arizona in 2002 for shoplifting and in 2004 for forgery. Unfortunately, by the time his DNA was linked to the crime, he had already been deported to Honduras years earlier for other, less serious crimes. As the police would later find, finding Alexis Flores was going to be a lot more difficult than they initially thought. Throughout his colorful criminal career, Alexis had provided multiple fraudulent dates of birth and names. Interesting. Despite his inclusion in the most wanted list, the only things the FBI really knows about him are that Alexis is around 5 foot 4, 130 pounds, and has five foot scars four? on his forehead and right cheek. Due to his crimes, he's obviously also considered armed and extremely dangerous. With a quarter five million four? dollar reward on his head for the crimes of kidnapping and murder, you would think that someone would have come forward with information on this guy. But 24 years he's after the crime, dude, Alexis has remained unfound. Wilver Villegas Palomino. The National Liberation I'm in, I'm Army like, what the... is a Marxist, Leninist, guerrilla insurgency group in Colombia, often referred to as. Yeah, like... I thought like most of these guys would literally go, like, be like guerrilla, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like this, ain't gonna lie. But what? Colombia's last true insurgency and one of Latin America's most powerful criminal organizations. That crypto one coming off guard in the last few years, the ELN <laughs> has expanded aggressively into Venezuela, thanks to which the National Liberation Army now has over 6,000 active members. Interestingly, for the first few decades Six, after its foundation, the group mostly focused their efforts on kidnapping, extortion, and attacking oil infrastructure. But over time, the ELN stopped shying away from drug trafficking and became deeply involved in the international drug trade, earning them the attention of the FBI. In 2023, Wilver Villegas Palomino became the 530th addition to the FBI's most wanted list on multiple serious charges ranging from narco-terrorism to, member. to drug trafficking. Yo, how big is this list? Often running under the alias The Hog, Palomino is a high-ranking member of the National Liberation Army who's been involved in a 20-year... What's up with all these nicknames with having to be with pigs, bro? You know what I'm saying? It, wait, a hog is a form, like an ancestor of a pig, right? The dude's name was Porky. This dude's a hog. To distribute drugs from Colombia What's the other guy's name going to be? Oink? Oink? Thanks to which a warrant Oinky? for his arrest was issued back in 2020. <laughs> Wilver has also been accused of murdering multiple human rights advocates in Venezuela and the Catatumbo region in Colombia between 2017 and 2019. 
Due to his high rank and his responsibility in flooding the streets of Houston and other major U.S. cities with drugs, the United States Department of State's Narcotics Rewards Program oh, is offering a reward of up to $5 million for information leading to Palomino's arrest. As of today, mm -hmm. it's a complete mystery where this guy is. Mm -hmm. But considering the ELN oversees the production of over 200 tons of drugs, which are later distributed Sheesh. worldwide, obviously including the U.S., it makes sense why he was put on the list. <laughs> Donald Eugene Fields II. Since 2022, Donald Eugene Fields has been wanted That's by the FBI like for alleged about. trafficking of at least one child in Missouri between 2013 and 2017. According to the authorities, Fields took a 14-year-old girl and offered her to his friend Ted Sartori Jr. in exchange for cash, cars, motorcycles, vacations, and Christmas presents. Last Bro, you, bro, what? You took somebody, and you want you wanted to cause motorcycles, Christmas presents, and shmoney. What? Last known to live in Franklin County, Missouri, Fields has apparently been moving around what? the country since 2022, working sporadic jobs as that a don't sound like a real story. Currently selling used cars in an effort to fly under the radar. Based on court documents, it's believed that Donald probably took more than one victim, and that he might be hiding out with his girlfriend Jennifer Isgriggs, who is also wanted on a felony warrant for failure to provide child support. Since 2022, <laughs> the cops have received multiple tips indicating that Field spent some time in the Tampa area, and as soon as they heard that, they started running Facebook ads with his face on a most wanted poster to ask for the public's assistance in locating him. Unfortunately, it's likely that by then, Fields had already fled to Stover, Missouri. The FBI has also placed large billboards with Fields' face in cities where he's known to travel, but so far it seems like he's managed to stay a step ahead of the cops. That's insane. Earlier in 2024, Sartori, Fields' partner in crime, pleaded guilty to his charges and will face up to 30 years in prison. He'll also likely have to pay $25,000 in restitution to his victim. Based on court documents, he'll be officially sentenced in early November 2024. As per the FBI's description of the suspect, Fields has multiple scars on his body as well as a tribal print tattoo on his right shoulder. Six or six With four. such a big effort being made by the FBI to make this guy's face known, hopefully someday he'll be recognized by someone and promptly turned into the authorities. But okay. for now, the cops have urged the public to consider him armed and dangerous. I don't know what I was expecting when I clicked on that video, broski, but whoa, whoa. That was a lot of information I wish I didn't know that I, that I now know, and I'm going to lie to you, bro. What the fuck? Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to post this, bro.